Yoski, I hope this one will be cool. Uh, I do like it, but uh, let's start with what it uh, actually is or what it does. And if you're thinking that this is a clock, you are forgiven. Uh, it is nothing as trivial as a clock. So basically what you see now, it's like 11 minutes, well, 11 hours, apologies, 25 minutes till uh, dawn. Because this actually shows you like the cycle of daylight and night and stuff like that. So I think the easiest way to describe, well, I will just describe, you know, like, what it does so 11 hours 25 minutes till dawn when dawn happens then it will count down again until sunrise yes and once sunrise happens it will then count down until the local solar noon you know like when the sun is supposed to be directly above your head once that happens it will then obviously start counting down till um uh, sunset and once sunset happens it will count until dusk ends and the night starts so we're actually at this point we're past uh, uh, the end of dusk it's now basically we're waiting dawn <laughs> it's 11 hours and 24 minutes and yeah i mean the images the background images they do change you know like now it's night and then there are like those transition images uh, for dusk and down and then two images from before the solar noon and after the solar noon. Unfortunately, I don't have like any quick way to show you them here and now, so you have to trust me because this stuff is working. I mean, it's so we'll get to the history in a bit, but yeah, so that's uh, like a visualization of uh, the states. And to me, this is mostly you know, like I live up north, I'm actually checked it today. I'm three times closer to the Arctic Circle than I am to the equator. <laughs> oh, you know, when the winter comes, we don't really get that much daylight. As you can see, like the real time, like real clock, wall clock now, it's like almost half past 7 p.m., which is not really late, but it's already night. So, yeah, and I think that was my original motivation to do that, just to have this kind of a visceral, visual indicator and reminder that mate it's still daylight <laughs> if you want to do something in daylight this is exactly how much time you have left and yeah now the history of this thing so um i've done it i think at the end of 2021 you know like on the verge between 2021 and 2022 so this thing has been working for a good two two years constantly it's 24 hours a day you know it's constantly on and um, yeah it was at that time when I actually realized that hey I'm an actually a grown-ass adult and I can you know actually try making actual stuff in like meat space so physical things not just uh, code and computer stuff and maybe some small electronics which I have been doing since I was I guess eight or ten like since a long time basically so yeah I mean you know what you're seeing here is the physical, well, the mostly like the new physical part of it. And uh, yeah, the screen, it's an OLED screen. It's like off the shelf component. They do not last very long when you know, like abuse like that being on all the time. I think this is the second one. So the first one lasted about a year and then, then just, you know, like died. And it's already highly burnt in, which you don't really see it that much now. You see it a lot more during the day when basically the color scheme is obviously reversed now it's like white on black during the day it's uh, black on white and then you see like all the artifacts but to me that's you know like part of it it's aging and after the first uh, you know, the original let's call it like that uh, screen died i bought two of them <laughs> so i'm probably good for another year or two and yeah i mean on this side you know like all the work i spent was on making this metal thingy the stand I don't know if you want to call it an enclosure and that's the you know like the dust from here it's very dusty in this uh, area in general and yeah I mean like you know that side it's super simple it's the module that you buy off the shelf then just making the connector the cables a little bit of strain relief but yeah the metal work I actually bought my first uh, angle grinder for that and I had no idea what I was doing 
and you can kind of see it. I mean, the this is the metal. It's a it's a it's steel of unknown provenance. It was again some sort of trash that I found, and you know, like cutting this sort of a small window. That was fun. It's you know, like all over the place. So. Uh, yeah, you can definitely see like this like another inset plate. It's not a plate. It's a piece of paper <laughs> I just you know like to make it look nicer like hide the crimes of actually not knowing what you're doing and making the actual metal cut out too big I sold it with that and yeah painted with uh, I think it's uh, Metropolis Greece, which is a really nice color. So it's not exactly black but it's really dark and you see proper fasteners in I think it will be like M2, so like metric screws and nuts, a bit of Captain tape, just, you know, like, I don't really move it that much, but when I do, I would not like to kill it. And yeah, in terms of size, uh, I have a prop, which is actually a genuine 2015 North Carolina United States of Freedom Fries. It's a quarter, I think. It's a quarter dollar, yes, so the stuff is precisely that big which is small and it's also nice because you know I think you might have seen it especially in my like latest or like around this time videos when I film like front wise not top wise that it always sits there and just reminds me how little daylight I'm getting so yeah I mean history wise cool stuff and yeah we're already on how it's made so this part is dumb it's just a display and a way to hold it and cables and this is an i squared c generic uh, oled module so the brain behind that it's uh, obviously raspberry pi it's not a dedicated thing it's one of the many things that the raspberry pi does and uh, in terms of like the display you no know, i've written all the software and i think i've done most if not all of the images i had some help from my friend so thanks sean for like being there for like because you know it's like pixel art i don't even remember what resolution this is but it's like postage stamp so you know having some pixel art skill is definitely definitely good especially to start you know i just like modified stuff and yeah um, and this is called astral vis because uh, this is like a python script and it's in python solely because i found this library and it's called astral which makes it easy you just plop in like your uh geographical position you know like the latitude and longitude and uh, i think some like other things like your elevation and then it like lets you like quite easily ask like when will the sunset be when will be the dusk etc etc all those things so it's basically driven by that and then all i'm doing is just uh, generating images so like the backgrounds are static they are pre-made and then i just paint like the the countdown clock basically um, yeah, it's like the peel, the Python imaging library, which is awful, but hey, it works. I'm not complaining. And I think the last thing is uh, the communication. The Raspberry Pi has I squared C like on board. It has like peripherals in the sock for that. So that's uh, another easy thing. There's a library from Adafruit, I believe, that you know just plug and play. And yeah, it's like a, it's a fun thing. Uh, I was supposed to put like the code and the images on GitHub, but I never got around to it. Which again, like if there's enough demand, you know, in air quotes, air quotes, then sure, why not? I mean, it's a, probably like a hundred or hundred something lines of code. It's really simple. I think the last feature or like the most advanced feature that I've done is that, you know, like at each phase of the day, you can have not a single image, like a background image, but a set of images. So you can like these things change. So like you see here, like small satellite here. It sometimes gets bigger like it's getting closer and for the daylight I have drawn like fun stuff like a like a and like an UFO UFO <laughs> and then like a fighter plane chasing it but again it's like static images I was thinking about animations it's definitely possible to do animations like in this setup I'm pretty sure I have some really shitty old video on my channel where it's just like the animation like some random stuff that's, you know, just to prove the concept that, yes, you can actually, like, in Python, you know, like, animate this stuff and it looks fine. Yeah, it does. So, mm. yeah, I mean, like, th this stuff doesn't really do anything without the Raspberry Pi. 
But then again, I think I might have had ideas about trying to port like the whole thing to Raspberry Pi Pico, you know, this microcontroller thing. I've done one project where I've ported stuff that I've done on Arduino onto the Pico and it was interesting and wasn't as difficult as I thought. In this case, the main thing is that again, this is Python and this is based on like a pre-made library for all the orbital mechanical mathematics and stuff like that, which I assume that if I were actually get into just the stuff that I want, it would be definitely possible to do it on the on the Pico, but hey, I mean, this works, I like it, two years, you know, when the uh, module, like with the screen fails, I, again, it's like all proper fasteners, no glue, no CA glue this time, nothing like that, just like proper mechanical stuff, and the uh, Metropolis grease, yes, really nice color, so yeah, I mean, you could, you know, like, it's a, it's a thing, I'm liking that, it's definitely more interesting to me than another plain old clock, so yeah, if you wish for me to like put the code stuff on GitHub, like just put it in the comments. If you have any questions or concerns <laughs> about safety, no, this is like 5 volts, there is no need for much safety here. But in any case, I uh, hope you've enjoyed it and that you found this interesting. I think I haven't seen anyone do anything like that. I'm not saying that I'm the first, I certainly hope I'm not the first, that would be kind of kind of sad, you know, in terms of the state of the world and humanity, but it's uh, something that I like. So yeah, uh, thanks for watching, bye!